Welcome everyone. I'm Nicole Lezen, one of the local consultants, along with Nicole Young, who facilitate a countywide initiative called the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based or Core Investments, which is a collective impact approach to achieving equitable health and well-being for all people across the lifespan in Santa Cruz County. And we are co-facilitating today's conversation on harnessing local data to create the core conditions for thriving families and community connectedness with Eva Holt Russmore from Data Share Santa Cruz County and Eric Morris from the Santa Cruz County Health Services Agency. And today's session, like other core and data share events, is being held bilingually in English with Spanish interpretation, thanks to our team member Stella Laurman, who is providing interpretation today, and Gisela Carrasco, who translates comments and questions in the chat and whose voice you're hearing. Okay, and with that, I will turn it over to Eva. Hi, good morning. My name is Eva Holt and I'm a social impact consultant based here in Santa Cruz. And one of my roles is to shepherd DataShare Santa Cruz. So for those who are less familiar with DataShare Santa Cruz, it is a data platform. And the platform provides uh, over 400 indicators um, around health and wellness and well-being um, from local, state, and national sources. Uh, we aim to have the updated version of all data and reports on this platform with the most current information. And DataShare is constantly changing. Uh, new indicators are constantly being added and updated. This is the central hub of information that creates alignment by allowing everyone to measure outcomes with the same metrics and indicators. And we've seen this platform leveraged in a variety of uh, different community settings from um, uh, community hospital using the platform and the data um, to different advocacy groups. Um, the platform has visualization and uh, previously static data sets like the CAP. And if you're in my breakout group today, we'll be looking at that quite a bit. Um, and uh, we have integrated data sets uh, that were previously not available to the public, such as the safety net clinic uh, utilization data. So we've seen this uh, platform used by students, researchers, advocacy groups uh, for program evaluation, grant writing, and fundraising. Um, the platform is operated uh, through a collaborative, and we have some guiding principles um, that help us create um, a roadmap for decision making and prioritization of our uh, data additions, our data literacy initiatives and communications. Um, and these are some of them shared here. So these principles are our North Star, uh, so that we're being more than just intentional uh, and moving towards an actual roadmap uh, for data equity. And um, again, uh, if you have looked at the platform, you'll see that we have added local data sets to fill some uh, strategic gaps that we don't we didn't previously have that information for. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to our discussion today. Um, if you go to the next slide, uh, we'll get into that piece. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. And I'm going to do a quick walk through the, um, the results menu and how to get to it on, on DataShare. So I'll share my screen again. Hold on just a second. Let me get the right page up. And I think we're going to have a link in the chat for you to get to the same page, which is datashareSCC.org. So hopefully you're seeing that. So the way to get to the core results menu, there's lots of other great stuff on here about DataShare, but the quickest way is to go to the local progress tab and click on the core results menu. And when you do that, you will see what we hope is a familiar graphic of the core conditions. And the core results menu, which is just below this with these tiles, 
was developed as part of core investments. It's housed on data share so that local data and reports can be directly connected to each of these core conditions for health and well being, as we'll discuss in our breakout groups in a few minutes. It's a tool that can help you identify community strengths and needs, set goals for community well being, track progress, and connect strategies and program outcomes to promising practices and community impacts for each of these core conditions for health and well being. Each of these has community impacts and indicators associated with them in the menu. They were co designed and vetted with many partners from multiple sectors. There were some of you who participated in these large convenings called core conversations over the last several years. We also had a core steering committee helping to guide this work. We had specific input from different groups in the community like the Human Care Alliance, the Children's Network, the Elderly and Disabled Transportation Advisory Committee, and many, many others. We wanted to note a few thing, things about these. As Eva has mentioned, there are lots more indicators on data share, although the, the list that's associated with the core conditions and the indicators associated to, with the core conditions are a subset of all of the indicators available on data share. We tried to collect and curate some key ones through this vetted attempt to collect them in one place and provide a portrait for each core condition and the desired impacts associated with them. But as you'll see when we get into them, there are lots of gaps and data not yet available. And that's because the data landscape is constantly evolving. And we hope that this um, framework will be fleshed out with more indicators over time. So there are opportunities to suggest them and to help us understand where those gaps are. There are also many other core tools available both on DataShare and on an upcoming core website that reflect back to these core conditions and the indicators and results associated with them. Um, we really are so appreciative that DataShare is available as a platform to house um, these, these indicators and the results menu itself. It has really come a long way since it was first launched in 2019. It will continue improving with um, contributions from everyone. But just we just urge you to not be too frustrated if you see one of these uh, data not available um, messages on something you're particularly interested in. Uh, as we'll show you when we go, go into some of the detail on the core conditions that we're exploring today, just because a particular indicator or piece of data is not yet available, that means it's not um, funneled through the, the data share um, platform yet. That doesn't mean there's nothing about that indicator available. There are still other um, local reports and other, um, other paths that you can follow to try to flesh out an understanding of a particular indicator. So today we're gonna to talk about all of that, about how to use data with its flaws, its gaps, um, anything else that might not be perfect about it as a springboard to discuss what we can all do as a community to contribute to equitable health and well-being for everyone in our county, even when we don't have perfect data because that day um, may not come. So we may, may always be dealing with gaps and imperfect data depending on what we're interested in. Today, we're focusing on these two here that you see in the orange and, and blue tiles, the um, thriving families and co community connectedness core conditions. We have focused um, discussions on, on these two in breakout groups. We'll focus on a couple of indicators for each of these. And you are welcome to explore the others. And maybe you're connected to these two core conditions in a more tangential way. So maybe another one of the, the uh, core conditions is more where your, your work is centered. So we hope that you'll be encouraged to look at all of these in some way or another and to see the connections across them. But today we are going to focus on um, the two of the indicators in each of thriving families and community connectedness. So I'll show you how to get to these if you're following along on DataShare in the results menu. In Thriving Families, we're gonna look at this first impact, which is increased resilience of children and youth. And if you click on it, which we'll be doing in the breakout group associated with that impact, you can scroll down and see various types of data. And each of these has more opportunities 
to look at data as well as the data unavailable at this time that we just mentioned. So we'll be looking at two indicators in thriving families and similarly two in community connectedness. We'll look at um, impacts uh, one and two in each of those. And as we have time, we'll go into impact three as well. So again, if we don't get to your particular interest today, please feel free to explore on your own. We're gonna put everyone in breakout groups, so you may um, not have a chance to review and discuss every single one of these, but please do some exploring on your own. DataShare really does reward that um, if you have some extra time to, um, to explore these and other indicators and impacts. We are assigning you to one of four breakout groups. Each group will have a facilitator, and one group will stay in the main room with Nicole Young, and that will be a group with interpretation and recording. The other three big breakout groups will be in English only with no recording. And each group will have one of the four of us as facilitators to lead a brief round of introductions. And then we'll ask for a volunteer um, to report back to the large group. So we hope you'll be prepared for that. And then, um, We'll have about 25 minutes in each group. And let me bring the slides back up so you can see those questions again. And so even though in each group we'll be looking at different indicators, we will be discussing the same kinds of questions about them and see how far we can get with these. And again, the, the idea is that even when we don't have every single piece of data that we would like to have, we, that doesn't mean we can't have productive discussions and explorations of the landscape related to these indicators and impacts in our community. So any questions before we get into our small groups? And then just to let everyone know, we'll, we're gonna spend 25 minutes total in the breakouts. So I'll set the timer so you'll see a little clock on your screen somewhere after 23 minutes, then the countdown timer will, will start just so you have a heads up that um, you have a couple more minutes to wrap up your discussions before everyone is magically sent back to the main room here. Thanks, Nicole. And I also just want to acknowledge that um, some of us in Santa Cruz County may be experiencing some power or Wi-Fi issues. So just bear with us. And if that happens to you, if you can find a way to log back in, please do. But um, if one of us pops off, <laughs> we'll, we'll just uh, hope for the best and hope you can get find your way back to us. So fingers crossed that we can make it through the next hour or so without that. Okay, are we ready? Right. Ready? Here we go. Okay, so again, I'm gonna um, share my screen and encourage you to either just watch what I'm doing or if you wanna follow on and, along and mimic my steps in the core results menu, you're welcome to do that as well. So I'm going to show again the core results menu on data share. And um, the easiest way to get there, again, is if you go to the data, if you're on the data share homepage, Go to local progress, core results menu, click on that and it takes you right here. So it's got a little bit of introduction about core and then each of the eight core conditions with those impact statements that Nicole was showing just a moment ago. So in our group today, we're going to focus on thriving families as the core condition and increased resilience of children and youth as our impact. So I'm gonna click on this one. And you'll see that again, it takes you to, you can tell which core condition you're in by the header at the top. We can see which impact statement we're in, increased resilience of children and youth. And then this one has a handful of indicators that are related to it listed below. Um, some of them you will see again that have data in data share, others that don't, but these were basically names or categories of indicators that um, when we were developing this core results menu, there were people and agencies, partners uh, during our vetting process that said, oh, that would be really good to include if there's data. So we wanted to create these placeholders for the data, even though several of these say data unavailable at this time. 
Some of these, um, there actually is data available, for instance, on experiences with childhood trauma, um, but not enough data collection points. Like it hasn't been, that data hasn't been collected enough times to meet um, the criteria or requirements to be listed on data share. There needs to be multiple um, data points so that uh, data share can show like trends over time. So there's different reasons why data might be unavailable at this time. But you'll see that for indicators where there is data, there is a description of the indicator. Um, there are some little icons here that tell us about the overall trends compared to the state, uh, national data, and our local trend over time. Um, and so you'll see kind of different. And then if you hover your mouse over the uh, description, you'll see it, it describes or defines what it's what it's saying. And so we're actually going to focus on this first one here, child abuse and neglect. And I'm going to click on the see more data. And you'll see that when you do that, it takes you straight to the actual data indicator uh, that's on data share. And so this one is um, show, showing data about the substantiated rate of child abuse, meaning there's been some kind of uh, report about concern around child abuse or neglect, and it has been looked into by Child Protective Services, and then there was a uh, reason to be concerned or the report was considered substantiated, meaning that there was enough uh, reasons to be concerned to open up then a, a case to provide services um, to support that family. And so it tells you what the name of the indicator is. This tells you right away when the last data was collected. So here we can see that's 2021. It actually defines what the what the indicator is, is saying. So this is showing the number of children under the age of 18 that experience abuse or neglect. And it's uh, reporting this at a rate, meaning it's the number of cases per 1,000 children in our population. It's just a way to... Um, to report data or numbers in a way that's more standardized or, or consistent. And then each of the indicators, you'll see a little definition or and why it's important. And really this one, we know from a lot of research uh, that has been done over the years that experiences in childhood, both positive and adversity, um, have a have a lifelong effect on health and well-being and economic opportunities. There's just so many uh, studies that have shown that what happens in childhood uh, doesn't just affect what happens in childhood, but affects lifelong outcomes. And so uh, we like to pay attention to this one in particular to see how our children and families doing in our community. And so if you look at this, if you keep scrolling down, then you'll see a little bit more information about this indicator. So here we can see our current uh, rate is two cases, two substantiated cases per 1,000 children in our community. And you can see that compared to the state's rate, ours is quite a bit lower, even lower than the national rate compared to the prior year's value of 2.1, it's still declining. So we see this uh, decline over time, which is a, uh, that's the direction we want to see the rate going. And when we uh, look at what the Healthy People 2030 target is, that's just a um, certain uh, organizations, health organizations have set these benchmarks, kind of goals for us, for communities to be aiming for. You can see that locally, uh, we're already well below the target of 8.7 cases per 1,000 children. So that tells you a little bit about the trends. You can see with this particular indicator that it will show you the trends over time. So you can see that decline happening year to year. And then this particular indicator also has data available by subgroup. So here for this indicator, there's data available broken out by age as well as race and ethnicity. So if you wanna see those, you just click on the boxes there and then you can see these additional charts appear. So these charts I believe are just showing the 2021 data 
the age breakdowns and race ethnicity don't show the breakdowns by year. It's just showing the most recent years worth of data. And then just so, as a last little piece in terms of this overview of how to how to navigate or how to understand what's on this data share page. If you keep scrolling down, then you'll see this whole section here about related content, related content to this particular indicator that we selected. So you can see other indicators that you might wanna look into. You can see uh, other data resources, local reports that are related. Uh, and then there's a promising practices database where you can find specific programs or or models that are um, meant to address child well-being, child abuse and neglect, things like that. Okay, so those are lots of areas where you could explore further if you wanted to, or if you were looking for more specific information. But for now, I'm gonna scroll back up and I'm gonna ask Gisela to um, post the questions in the chat again. And, and I'm gonna invite anyone to Come off mute or share your thoughts in the in the chat. Maybe Gisela, let's start with the first question. And I just want to welcome some of the people that are just now joining um, and let you know that we are uh, all the participants are in different breakout rooms. So you're basically joining a breakout discussion discussion that's in progress, uh, focused on a particular indicator. Um, this one is looking at substantiated rates of child abuse and neglect. And so I just did a little walkthrough of, of what you see on this page once you arrive here. And now for our first question, um, I'm, I'd be curious to just hear your thoughts about when you look at this or you hear what I just described uh, on the page, what stories do you see? that are being told about this indicator? What stories do, does this indicator tell about particularly the strengths or assets of people or places in our community? So another way to think about it is what's, you look at this data, what's the good news that you see in here? Gisela, maybe one more time, because I know a couple people just joined. Can you go ahead and post the link to the results menu in the chat again? So if anyone wants to click on it and open it up in their, on their own device, they can do that. And Julie, I just saw you come on camera and it's nice to see your face. Did you want to share a thought about what kind of story you think this indica indicator tells about strengths or assets in our community? Well, it's great to see that it's going down over the last seven years, like considerably. And um, also is good news. It was a um, nice thing to jump on here and say, oh, this is lower than, I, I didn't quite catch all of it. If, if you said the state, the state rate or the national rate or both. Oh yes, thank you. Um, so that is, that's also, um, and I would I would guess as much because you do get a sense of well-being in this community um, compared to other communities. So yeah, just confirmed some some good news. Yeah, and I think that's a really great way to look at it. Sometimes when we see this kind of data, it just helps confirm either an assumption or a theory we might have that we might, you know, look around and think, oh, this this seems like things are going well in our community in this area. Uh, and it can be helpful to then actually look at some data to see, oh, okay, yeah, the, the trends match up with what I perceived or thought or have noticed. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts or comments, things that you notice that stand out as strengths or positive things about this particular indicator? What about for the next question, Giselle, we'll put that in the chat. What about um, any data or 
information that you feel is missing or not quite clear when you look at the charts here? Missing or unclear or things that just make you go, hmm, I wonder what's going on there. Could you scroll down so we could see the other ones again too? Yes. So when we look at the breakouts or breakdowns by age, and then race and ethnicity. Is there anything about those charts and kind of the shape of the data or the shape of the charts that stands out to you? Um, personally, the, the rate of child abuse in children under one year old is very shocking in a second. And it'd be interesting to see that, how that rate has changed over time, specifically for um, abuse rates in children under the age of one. Because mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's a huge amount. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's more than four times the rate, the overall rate, right? So it's just seeing that significant difference there. Um, can lead to questions like, hmm, what's what's going on there? And, and is that, has that trend or pattern um, been true over time or is this more recent? And I believe that again, with this um, particular breakdown, we, we're not able to see it uh, as the trend over time. But so sometimes just seeing the data like this might lead to those kinds of questions where maybe you do have to do, do a little bit more digging or uh, go to the original data source. Was someone uh, adding something there or just? Um, oh, and actually, you know what? I just, I'm just noticing here, if I click on the measurement period, the little triangle, Next to measurement period. Let's see what it does if I select 2020. Okay, look at that. So even I learn something new every day. So this is now showing the 2020 data. So we could, it, it would take a, you know, several clicks then, but you could then see, okay, what did this look like over time? And we see that in 2020, there was still that significant difference there. If we look, let's go back one more year to 2019. Again, we, st we still see, and this one here has the ages broken down even more than I think what we were seeing in the other uh, charts there. So you could, if that was something you really wanted to dig into and get a sense of, you know, what's changing over time or how have things changed over time, uh, you could do that by selecting a different measurement period up at the top there. Um, but it still doesn't necessarily tell you why, right? Like the data just tells you what the data is. And so many times the data still requires um, doing a bit more digging and, and asking and talking to others to really try to understand, you know, what uh, what's going on behind that trend there? Is it really that children who are under the age of one are experiencing abuse and neglect at a much higher rate than older children? Or is it more about the policies and the practices within child welfare where there's kind of a uh, higher um, sensitivity uh, in terms of, you know, things to look for or things that are of concern? So sometimes it has to do with the actual behavior, sometimes it actually has to do with uh, policies and practices that affect uh, what happens with reports. Okay, any other comments or things anyone wants to say about what you notice, either strengths or gaps or things that makes you curious about? I'm curious of, um, about the breakdown between soci um, economic and education levels, because 
you know, we could make some assumptions. Um, if those assumptions were confirmed, then it would be just another reason to um, to strengthen um, policies that would make it more equitable for people that were in lower um, economic groups or lower education groups. Yeah, so then really trying to look at, you know, what are some root causes or contributing factors? How do we address those? Mm -hmm. um, and so this page on DataShare doesn't have that kind of breakdown available. Um, but if you, sometimes if you click on or look at what is the original data source, and in this case, it's the Child Welfare Dynamic Report System, uh, I've already clicked on it and opened up. This is what it takes you to. Um, sometimes that you might be able to find additional breakdowns or, um, okay, we've got two minutes left. You might be able to find additional breakdowns or data that aren't displayed on data share. Um, and I don't remember off the top of my head whether this is one where the, uh, where it, um, here we go. Do, 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 do. I don't think this is one that also lets you look at things by socioeconomic status. But sometimes, depending on the indicator, if you you know want to explore further, you can look at the original data source. You might be able to find additional breakdowns like that. Okay. Um, to get at, and I, I like how you raised that point, Julie, like to really look at, okay, not just what services might be needed, but like what policies might need to change in order to, again, address some root causes. We're gonna be joined any, any moment now by uh, the folks from the other breakout groups. Before we uh, pause our conversation, would anyone be willing to give a brief a uh, summary of what we looked at and what we talked about or shared in our group here. And it would just be a summary of, of the impact area that we looked at. Sorry, the core condition, the impact area of increased resilience children youth and looking at child abuse and neglect in particular, and some of the insights that came up in our discussion. Julie, is that something you'd be willing to do by any chance? Oh, you're on mute. I missed the first part, so I don't feel that confident about being a good representative of what was discussed. Oh, okay, okay. Well, maybe I'll, I can start us off, and then if you want to add on, because I thought you had some good insights as well, that would be great. Okay, welcome back, everyone. How was that overall? It went fast, as always. It did, and we even gave more time to our breakouts this, <laughs> this time. Um, so we wanted to spend a little bit of time just hearing from each group uh, about the core condition, the impact statements, and then the particular indicator your group looked at, and then share a few highlights of what came up in your discussions. And so hopefully everyone has a spokesperson from their group and, and um, we can actually start with our group that stayed in the main room. And I'm gonna start it off and then ask Julia to help chime in with some of the, uh, the insights that came up. So our group focused on thriving families as a core condition. And we looked at the first impact statements of increased resilience of children and youth, and then looked at a particular indicator related to um, child abuse and neglect, and specifically the, the rate of substantiated reports of, of child abuse and neglect, meaning that uh, something was, there was a concern that was reported, it was looked into, and child welfare felt there was uh, indeed reason to be concerned. And so we looked at some data, I can actually share my screen to 
if anyone is curious to see what we looked at. Um, so here we, this is what we looked at and we looked at this particular indicator and looked at the trends, what those icons told us about the trends over time and the charts telling us about trends over time. And then this one does have breakdowns by both age and race and ethnicity. Um, and Julie, I thought you had some good insights that you picked up on uh, really pretty quickly. Do you wanna share a couple thoughts about what you had noticed? Well, one person in our group, um, like probably many of us were surprised, shocked to see that the rate was so much higher amongst infants. And then Nicole brought up the good point of, does that mean that they're actually experiencing more um, child abuse or is, or is that, that group just getting reported um, more, uh, more effectively through child welfare and that kind of thing? Um, the thing I was curious about is, the breakdown amongst economic groups and also education levels so that uh, would give us more information about policies and services that might be needed for those groups. Yes, thank you for that. So it was a, it was a uh, great way to kind of raise that point about um, sometimes when we look at the data, it raises more questions than it answers and that the data might lead us to think about what other services might be needed, but also can be really helpful to think about what policies uh, might need to be changed or addressed. So that kind of as a preventive measure um, and really looking at root causes. Thank you for that, Julie. Uh, Issa, did you wanna add anything to that? I know that you also had shared some of those insights as well. Um, I think that uh, Julie covered what I was interested in pretty well. I don't know if I have anything else to add. Just, yeah, um, echoing the surprise at the child abuse rate in infants and yeah. the questions that that raises. Yeah. And I think, Issa, were you, were you the one that had also asked about whether that was a trend over time or whether that was just kind of true of this particular year? And it led us to discover that... Uh, if you click on the measure, the triangle by the measurement period up at the top by the indicator name that you can actually see a drop down menu there where you can look at and select different years of data that are available uh, to be able to see it for the breakdowns there. So that was, I was sharing that was something new that I don't think I had realized that before. <laughs> Despite all the number, no, many times that I use data share. Okay, how about uh, Nicole Lezen? You want to have your group go next? Sure. I was unsuccessful in soliciting a volunteer. So I'm hoping that the members of the group will chime in. But we looked at some of the indicators for older adults, and we um, spent a lot of time um, looking at the various formats and what was available for each indicator. And we didn't get too far into our questions, but we did start an interesting discussion about some of the gaps and what, what we may or may not learn from different indicators. So we looked um, in particular at geographic isolation and I'll share my screen as well to show people where that ended up. So here you can see um, that there are, again, the trend lines compared to um, the U.S. and other California counties that are a little different. So there's some conflicting data there. And one of the interesting discussions that we got into was about it, when you looked at um, geographic isolation by parts of the county, you can see that it's higher in North County than South County. So we had some discussions about why that might be and whether that would be something that reflects a strength, like stronger family ties and multi-generational households, or challenges like housing overcrowding. So there are different ways to interpret what might look like a better trend in some places than others. Um, and so it raises some questions about what we do or do not know. And then we also talked about things like the data sources. So in this case, it's the American Community Survey with five-year kind of rolling averages and data points. 
um, that may or may not reflect things like COVID. So for example, this would be just in the first year of some of that particular type of isolation. And then we talked about how we can learn more about what, what these percentages mean in terms of a denominator. What's it actually asking? Is it self-reported data? Is it something, um, something else like a, a census um, report? So we, we talked about just what, what we do know and what we don't know from some of these data points. And we're trying to demonstrate how we can still have an interesting and productive discussion, even when we have questions, or especially if we have questions or have missing data points. And I would love to invite anyone in our group who would like to add more either about our, the discussion we just had or other ways that you have been using um, data share to explore some of these questions and gaps. So George, Danu, Heather, Becky, anything you'd like to add? Jennifer? I think just our, our group um, raised that, you know, a lot of these um, charts, you kind of, um, lay groundwork for further inquiry and, you know, thinking about what the, the data is telling us either regionally or, or with particular populations or communities. And um, so we were kind of asking questions about the sources and, and how you would interpret it and then um, how you would use data share for kind of further inquiry and other, other data sources. Thanks, George. Anybody else? I just wanted to, um, I'll just kind of echo what was said already by Nicole and George, but it was very, um, it was very interesting to see. I, I really liked seeing the visual, the map by region was, was super interesting. As you know, our county has, um, has a really uh, a vast sort of array of um, households all over, but there are some pretty marked differences between North and South County and things like that. So seeing this this laid out visually was was a very interesting uh, jumping off point to asking more questions about why why we're seeing this. And like Nicole said, what are the strengths and um, what are the areas that that need more support? Thanks, Danu. Okay. Are you ready to move well, on to the next so. group? Yeah, yeah thank I you. That was Eric. So Eric, do you want to tell us which core condition and impact and indicator your group looked at? Yes, uh, we looked at uh, community connectedness with impact one connection to others. And mainly, let me share my screen real fast. It was... Uh, support persons available at times in need. And what we noticed uh, right away in our group was that the there was a lack of data or a lack of like being able to disaggregate the data in terms of like ethnicity, like age group and that type of stuff, along with a more like because of COVID, this data is kind of irrelevant in that regard to where we needed more data to show why a support person in COVID was so important and that type of stuff. And then anybody else in the group would like to jump in and add to this, they can as well. But that was the main focus as well as like maybe taking the support person and making it more of like a general like idea, but then having it like some sub data of those different types of people that were affected by like not having maybe a support person or who had a support person in general, which I thought was a really great idea in that, that regard. And that's what we mainly focused on. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to add. Thank you so much, Eric. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, in addition to what Eric um, shared, um, you know, we were really looking at this through the lens of service, service provision and wanting 
more of that um, disaggregated data to be able to understand who has the support and who doesn't and where are the strengths and assets in our community and where are those gaps. Um, and the, the main thing um, that I didn't hear Eric say that I want to make highlight, um, uh, Stephanie from our group was uh, highlighted the fact that it's really important, it would be really important to know what are those times of need? You know, are we talking about, um, you know, a death in the family, a new birth, postpartum, divorce, um, you know, what is the crisis that people are experiencing so that we can then also understand, again, for service provision and for support, um, where are the strengths and where are the gaps in the community? Um, but yeah, I think everything else was, was covered and it was a great discussion. Thanks. Thank you, Robin. Does anybody else from our group want to bring anything forward? Okay, uh, I guess we'll move on to the next person. So Eva, I think that's your group. Do you want to give us the summary of, of the core condition impact and indicators your group looked at? And then if there's either you or someone else that's your yeah, person. I'd be happy to. Um, so we looked at community connectedness and access to diverse community arts and cultural experiences. Um, this is the list of vetted indicators that are desired by the community, and we do not have data available at this time under these particular titles. So I think that the discussion with this impact area was really um, about kind of where else in our community are reports in, or information or surveys happening that would be able to fill some of these gaps. Um, but I think that there was a general um, disappointment <laughs> um, and, and understandably so. Um, but there were also some opportunities for uh, moving forward to fill these gaps. Um, and um, I think that that will be really exciting in the future. It, it will probably be something that is locally produced um, to fill these gaps. So that means that um, a coalition of community agencies coming together to um, collect data um, together um, and uh, to talk about, you know, not just the the community um, and resiliency part of arts and cultural experiences, but also around the economic pieces of um, arts and, and culture. And um, I think we'll be seeing um, that information towards uh, the middle part of this year. And if we can't upload it in an indicator format, we'll definitely be adding it to the community reports section and um, highlighting that important work that's happening. Um, so that was the first piece. And then the, the second impact area that we talked about um, was increased civic engagement. And um, we had a little bit more filled out data here to discuss, um, but uh, there was a uh, pretty limited disaggregation. So kind of what you see here is what you get um, when you go into these. We didn't have a regional breakdown. Um, some of the indicators um, had, um, if we scroll down, you see participation in government. These are data points um, that had a little bit more disaggregation. So this kind of led us to discuss, you know, this is data that is being locally produced. Um, sorry to kind of scroll fast there. So here's the data that's being locally produced. As you can see, we don't have um, the comparison icons like some of the other data points that have um, more points in time or can define a trend. Um, and that's because we don't have enough data points to make those statistical analysis in the platform. So um, these are from the Community Assessment Project and the telephone survey. We were able to look at one breakout in these indicators, which is race and ethnicity, but the categories provided for race and ethnicity are so limited um, that it just kind of led to some um, comments in our group around um, what it means to emit smaller groups, um, and especially groups that, um, you know, have uh, 
historically been emitted from data. And if the data is being locally produced, how can we make changes, um, you know, at our fingertips, you know, supposedly these are the surveys that we're writing. So how can we write them in a way that instead of emitting that data completely because the data set is so small that we have a way um, to look at uh, those smaller race and ethnicity groups in our county um, that really represent uh, a deeper diversity and uh, human experience um, throughout the county. Um, that's, yeah, I think that that was, that was kind of what we talked about. Um, also, um, one of the members of our group was looking into the report section and just commented on how helpful it was to have um, the locally produced reports in subject areas. Um, she specifically referred to um, a homelessness report. So always whenever you're looking at the platform, um, if there's not an indicator that is um, that is helping to inform, uh, then they, we have the local report section. Um, so I'm, um, I think that was the only thing that other thing that was mentioned in our group. Um, and so you can see some of those reports down here. So, um, yeah, I don't know if anyone from my group wants to add something here. Um, Well, thank you. Sounds like sounds like each of the groups had some good discussion, and and uh, like Nicole started off saying at the beginning, sometimes the there's just as much value in being able to talk about, you know, what data is missing or what other questions come to mind when we look at data. That that's part of the process of making meaning of what we see or don't see, and checking our assumptions about what does the data say and. Uh, and also just by having these kinds of discussions and, and these sessions like this, it's helping us get a sense of like, are there other data sources out there that we could be um, looking into or gathering to help fill out and continuously improve data share. So um, sounds like each group had some really fruitful discussions, even if uh, even if we didn't get all the way through the questions because we didn't either in our <laughs> in our group as well, but had some really good really good discussion. Any other thoughts, comments, reflections after hearing and seeing what each group talked about? Or other things you're curious about in terms of data share and what's on it or how it can be used? Um, this is Danu at NAMI, and I have a question. This um, this may be something that the site can already do, but it would be really great to have more options to view, like the intersectionality of the different data points. You know, sort of side by side, and and um, you know how they trend together or they don't. So that that would be my question. Yeah, I think you are not alone in <laughs> having that wish and uh, feeling that it, that would be helpful. And I'm wondering, Eva, do you want to say anything about that in terms of the capabilities of data share or some of the potential workarounds? I mean, I think that your example, uh, Nicole, with your group in doing the drop down with the measurement periods and then doing the um, the breakouts um, is one workaround. If you go to the full indicator list, which I'll share in just a moment here, um, it will give you a list column, like it'll give you the whole 400 plus indicators. And then in a column next to it, it'll say which disaggregations it has. So it'll tell you, is it disaggregated just at the county level or does it have a zip code, census track, regional disaggregation? Um, so, you can, so you can see that kind of in the whole overview. And then it'll also tell you in that column view um, if there's an age disaggregation, if there's a race disaggregation, if um, 
if there is a disability disaggregation, if there's an access disaggregation. So, um, so that's one workaround. Um, currently, we're, we are working with our platform vendor to um, try and get a layered view of the data um, so that we could see the age and the uh, race and ethnicity um, layered on top of one another instead of um, separated. Um, and then we just have to make inferences um, around those when they're separated. Uh, but that tool is not yet available. So um, that that's, I guess, that's the workaround at this point. Um, and uh, we've been talking for about a year with the vendor to try and get um, that layered view. So we'll see. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll look into that workaround. And Eva, do you do you want to pull up your screen to show how or mm -hmm. where everyone can find that list of indicators? Yeah, um, thanks. So if you go to the landing page and then you scroll down, um, you can see all data in the need help navigating the site. And um, this is one way to look at it. Um, and then search for indicators. <laughs> Let me see that if I can do it. <laughs> oh, here we go. Indicator list view. That could be uh, a lot less clicks. Maybe we'll change that access. Um, so here's what I mean. So you have all of the indicators on the left-hand side broken up by um, different well-being categories, and then it'll give you what you what are the views that you can see here. So, um, oh, oh, it doesn't have um, age, race, and ethnicity. Okay. I think we oh, asked HCI for that, if they can do that, but we have asked them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me ask them again, because I don't see why that would be a, um, a difficult functionality. <laughs> and Danu, was part of your question also in terms of looking at the intersectionality of particular data points themselves and core conditions, like if you wanted to look at one indicator in the thriving families in relation to an indicator from maybe economic security, like that kind of intersectionality as well. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. You know, when we're looking at, um, ad you know, older adults in isolation, also looking at economic indicators would be super helpful. Um, yeah. And so probably the work around right now Eva, is it building a custom is it building a dashboard or report where you're just come so it still doesn't necessarily give you the ability to do kind of like that cross tabulation of older adults and economic uh security but you could look at indicators kind of you know side by side or grouped together you can do that there is also an indicator i think that talks about um i, I don't know the exact name of the indicator, but it's some, there's a number of indicators around like elders and poverty and uh, regional breakouts. Um, so you, there might be an indicator that gives you the actual information that you're looking for if you can't um, layer it in a dashboard or a report. Any other questions or things you're curious about or insights that you've had as we've been having this little discussion here. I'm just curious, and either you can raise your hand on screen or, or use the reactions button. Uh, how many of you think that this is a tool that you would, you could see yourself using, continuing to explore? I see Randa put her thumb up right away. Isa, yeah, great, it's good to know. And we'll keep doing these, uh, and we'll sh we'll sh share in a moment what our upcoming topics are. Uh, part of the reason why we do these joint data share and core uh, events like this is to get that kind of hands-on practice together of, of actually exploring the data share site and getting familiar with the core results 
menu and terminology and then having these kinds of discussions about what does the data tell us or not and that's part of our continuous improvement of the of the site so i appreciate all of you being here um nicole i think i'm gonna turn it back to um actually maybe before nicole Eva, is there anything you else you want to say in terms of what you see as any next steps or where to go from here after after today's discussion um, I think that there continues to be, um, and as as shown here by the people that use the platform um, pretty often, um, there's 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 still learning to be done on the platform. So um, I just want to encourage anyone who is trying to learn the platform or learn um, a particular data set, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to set up a little mini session just so that you can feel comfortable exploring it on your own. Um, we have had, uh, some kind of overview and then a little bit more in-depth sessions, which are recorded, um, on the core, uh, website, um, on their YouTube channel. Um, I think this time last year or something like that. So um, if you don't want to or don't have the time to set something up with me, um, those videos are recorded. Um, and there's tutorials on the platform as well, um, just to learn how to kind of the basic access of, of the platform and, um, and all of that. But yeah, don't be shy. I'm available and I'd be happy to walk um, through anything um, that you're learning on the platform together. Julia, I see your hand up. Do you want to ask something or say something? Yeah, um, I was wondering if you have like a one page colorful flyer, something that we could put up at our schools that shows the um, eight different indicator groups. I, I was kind of copying and pasting something from the website, but if somebody's already done the work, that would be awesome. <laughs> yes, we can certainly do that. We'll send that to everybody as part of our follow up email. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, then I think now I will turn over to Nicole to wrap us up. And uh, we also have a feedback poll we would like to ask everyone to fill out before you leave today's meeting. Thanks, Nicole. And um, I will share my screen and show you some upcoming events for 2023, which is alarmingly slash amazingly right around the corner. So we are going to do a similar discussion to this one on other core conditions. So coming up next will be healthy environments, and that'll be on Tuesday, February 7th, same timing, 10 to 11.15. And that'll be followed in April on the 18th by a, a dive into the indicators related to the core condition of safe and just communities. And then we'll wrap up this series um, on Tuesday, June 20th, with an exploration of stable, affordable housing and shelter. So uh, you don't have to wait for those to explore the impacts and indicators for each of the core conditions. Um, and also just a reminder that there are many, many other indicators, as Eva just mentioned, on data share itself. This is just the subset related to the core conditions that we are trying to explore together. But there are often um, others out there that might meet your needs. Um, so please don't feel constrained by, um, by what we just talked about. And, and we hope everyone will feel free to use these as intended as a springboard for more discussion, more discovery, more exploration. And um, echoing that every time I go to DataShare, I learn a new tweak, a new way to use it. Um, I know it can be overwhelming to see all of those different uh, links and features, but it really does reward repeat visits and a little time exploring. And so we, if you haven't done that yet, we hope you will and take Eva up on the offer for tutorials and TA because she's a great teacher. So thanks everyone. If you could fill out this feedback poll, we really find these so helpful um, and, and put them to good use in designing the next round of these. So thank you for being with us. Stay warm and dry, and we will see you next time.